Hello, I'm Patty Simpson with Simpson Math. Let's talk about the degrees of a circle. So I'm going to look at this circle and here I have the center of the circle and from the center of the circle I've drawn a radius, a line out, and if I take and draw another line from that I have now created an angle. Inside of here we call that an angle. And this particularly is the central angle because it's from the center of the circle. Now, in a circle, if I take and I go all the way around in a circle, we call that uh, the central angle and it's 360 degrees all the way around. So that angle there is 360 degrees. So if you ever hear someone do a 360 trick on their skateboard or their bicycle, it means that they took it and they spun all the way around. Now I'm going to take, and instead of doing a 360, I'm going to cut that in half. So instead of making a spin all the way around, I'm just going to spin halfway around. And let's think about what we think that measurement might be. What might that angle be? So here, Instead of spinning all the way around, I'm now just going to spin so that I spin halfway around. I'm just going to go halfway around. Well, I'm going to take that 360 and I'm going to cut it in half to find the measure of this angle. So I'm going to take the 360 and cut it in half. Or I could say I'm multiplying it times one half. Remember when you multiply with fractions, you just multiply straight across. So we end up with 360 over two. Two goes into three one time with one left over. Two goes into 16 eight times. Two goes into zero zero times. So if I just go around, if I just go halfway around, I've done a 180. So if you ever hear someone flip their position on something and they say they've done a 180, it means they've gone halfway around the circle, facing the other direction. Now, what if I take and I take half of that? So instead of going halfway around the circle, I just stop here so that I'm looking at this central angle, this measurement there. Again, what I'm doing is I'm taking half of that 180. Or if I were to split this circle into equal parts, I would have one, two, three, four equal parts. And each one of these central angles would be the same. So I could take this and split it in half, or I could take the 360 and split it into fourths. Let's try that. If I take the 360, 360 degrees all the way around, and I split it into one, two, three, four equal pieces, so that I have 360 times one fourth, again, remember when we multiply fractions, we just multiply straight across, top times top, bottom times bottom, 4 goes into 36 9 times, 4 goes into 0 0 times. So this degree is a 90 degree angle. That central measure, that angle of the uh, central measure there is 90 degrees. Notice also if I had taken 180 and split it in half, divided it by 2, I would get 90. I'm going to do that one more time where we take and we split that as well in half so that I'm just taking that 90 and splitting it in half. And if I look at how many equal pieces I would have in my circle, I would have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this angle is one-eighth of my entire circle. 
And I could do that same thing where I just take 360 times 1 8. Or I'm just taking this and splitting it in half. Let's see, if I split that in half, multiply this by 1 8, what do I get? Well, 360 divided by 8, 8 goes into 36, 4 times, 4 times 8 is 32. So I have four left over. I'm going to write that little four that's left over right there. Eight goes into 45 times. So that's a 45 degree angle. These are called the measure of the central angle. And we denote that or we write it. We say the measure of the angle is equal to whichever angle I'm looking at. So I may call that angle A there. So that angle, the measure of that angle is equal to 45 degrees. So this little notation just means the measure of the angle. Notice in order for us to find the measure of the angle each time, all we did was take the fraction of the circle and multiply it times the total number of degrees in our circle. So to find the measure of the central angle, to find the measure of the central angle, we just multiply the 360 times our fraction. So whatever the fraction is. Here, let me just say times fraction. Well, what about if I had a percent instead? You guys know that I could call this um, one half across, but I could also call that 50% because one half is the same as 50%. Well, to find out that measure of the angle for 50%, we do the exact same thing. We just take the 360 and multiply it times, I could say this is 50% because 50% is the same as that half. So times 50%. Remember when we multiply by percent, it's just percent is just 50 over 100, because percent is always out of 100. Then when I multiply, I can reduce or simplify first these zeros if I divide both the top and the bottom by 10. I can reduce this zero and that zero. So I'm really just multiplying 36 times five. Five times six is 30, carry a three, five times um, 3 is 15, 5 times 3 is 15, 16, 17, 18 that I carried. Notice that whether I'm multiplying by 50% or by 1 half, the measure there of that central angle is still 180 degrees. And how did I find the measure of that central angle? I'm just multiplying 360 times that percent. So to find the measure of the central angle, we just multiply by our 360 by our fraction, or we can multiply our 360 times our percent to get the measure of the central angle. Let's practice. Let's find the central, the measure of the central angle for each piece of this um, pie chart. Here we have a pie chart that shows the favorite fruit of whoever was surveyed. And it says 25% of those surveyed liked apples. What we want to know is what is the measure, what is the measure of the central angle? What is the measure of the central angle? For each piece. Well, to find that out, all we do is take our 360, that's the whole circle, and we look to see what fraction we're looking at or what piece we're looking at. In this case, it's times 25%. So I could do 360 times 
0.25, because 0.25 is the same as 25%. I could do 360 times um, 25 over 100, because 25 over 100 is equal to 25%. All of those things would work. 360 times, let's just leave it at 25 over 100. I'm going to simplify to help me, but you can do it times a decimal as well. I'm going to simplify to help me. Remember that um, we can simplify our fraction. So 25 goes into 100 four times. So I'm really doing 360 times 1 fourth, which we saw earlier was 90 degrees. So the measure of the central angle for apples is equal to 90 degrees. The measure of the angle for apples is equal to 90 degrees. Let's do one more. What about um, the oranges? Let's find the degree for oranges. That's not one we've done before. So what is the degree for oranges? Well, we take 360 degrees all the way around, and we just multiply it times the percent. So times 30%. We can use our 10% rule there to help us out with this. Remember, 10% of 360 is just 336. And then we need three of those, so we're just going to double it. So 36 times 3 is the same thing because 10% of it would be 36, and we need three of those, so we can just triple it. 18 carry 1, 9, 108 degrees. Or you can multiply it times 0.3 if that helps you, or we could do it as that fraction, 30 over 100, and you'll see that this zero and that zero cancel out because it's a 10 divided by 10 over 10, this 10 goes in there to make it 36, and you really are just doing 36 times 3. So the measure of the um, central angle for oranges is equal to 108 degrees. So as we make pie charts here later, we'll need to know the measure of our central angle. And the way we find that out is we simply multiply 360 degrees by the fraction or 360 degrees by the percent. Math made simple, it's simple math. Thanks for watching.